time. Good morning. Let's stand. Let's all stand. You know, today is, today is a very special day. Why? Because today is Sunday. But we, are, we have something more. You know, yesterday, uh, before we worship, I just would like to share something. Like yesterday, we have a birthday party. Wow, we have a birthday party. So yesterday, um, like after we have a party, birthday party, and then someone told me, someone told me, she said, oh, on Friday, you know what? On Friday night, I have been wanting a chocolate cake with strawberries. And you know what? Yesterday, the cake, it was chocolate with strawberry. And the cake is a surprise. I didn't tell the person that I prepared this cake. So it's a surprise. And then after the party, she told me that, wow, this is the exact cake she wanted. I was like, wow. I was like so touched. And guess who's the person? Naomi. Today is <laughs> Naomi's birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. And you know what this story told us that God even thought about what she wants before she realized what she wants. Yeah? Because I planned the cake on Tuesday and then on Friday she won that cake and then on Saturday you, she can have it. Isn't God amazing? Before we even think about it, He already know. Wow. This is our loving father. This is the good, good father. So today, I just want everyone to remember, no matter what you're going through, he is just right there with you. And even before you open your mouth, he already know what you're thinking. So don't be afraid to tell him what you're thinking. He already know. And no matter what, he loves you and he cares about you, each of you, so precious in his eyes. So today, let's come together and worship this loving father, good, good father, our king of kings, the Lord of laws. darkness we were wait without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophet to a virgin came the world from a throne of endless glory to a creditor
Father God, your name is holy. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. You are the one, you are the only one to be praised. Oh Lord, we thank you for giving us a new day to worship. Lord, would you open the gate of heaven and pour out this Holy Spirit on everyone in this place. So let us focus to worship you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Take a seat.
let you know more information about this event. But please, it's good for you to invite all of your friends to come to this event because this one is an evangelistic event from our church. So we want to get um, a lot of people as possible in thinking about who you are going to invite from now on. That will be really great. So, of course, we will let you know more when we get close to the date. Yeah? Um, so that's, I think that's the only announcement that we have today. Sunday school, if you want to go down now, please feel free to go down to level one. And parents, please help your kids to go down. English class, you will be free to go up to level four right now. Yes, so please go up to level four if you are here to study English. And... Can I please invite Wayne to come on the stage? Because Wayne is our preacher today. Yes, good to have you here on the stage. Wayne and Charlene, as well as I know, they are probably, you've been here, one of the people that's been here longest time, I think. Very, very long, really? I think. <laughs> yes. And, you know, you, I like the way you speak. And it makes us related to, to our life very much, right from the beginning. Because every time when you speak, the right sentence, the first sentence you say that you are one of us. I like that introduction. And it makes us feel related so much in your message about our life, living far away from countries in this country so i really appreciate every time Thank that you God. speak yeah, yeah. Uh, can i just wait maybe yeah. we just wait for a few seconds yeah. and then i pray for you and can we can start yeah okay. <laughs> just, yeah and while you do that i'll set up the <laughs> oh kevin you really talk <laughs> okay <laughs> Yes. Okay, so can I just pray before we get into our message today? Okay. Uh, Father, we thank you so much for today. Thank you for another day that we can gather here. We can sing your song. We can worship you. And also, it's a time for us to learn more about you. Please speak to us through Wayne and help us to open our mind and our hearts so that we can receive what you plan to teach us today. Mm. And please feel, feel free to cover us with your Holy Spirit and help us to, to, to be touched by your Holy Spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thanks, Don, for your kind introduction. <laughs> So as Don introduced, uh, so my name is uh, Wayne, uh, and if you feel like you haven't seen me before, it's because my wife, Shalene, is one of the uh, kids' zone teachers downstairs, so if you don't see me, that means I'm downstairs uh, helping out. <laughs> so today I will be speaking from the book of Luke. Uh, the main verses I'll speak on are from... Uh, chapter 4, verses 18 to 19. But as I was preparing, I thought it would be good for us to read a bit more of a story so we can see the context, what happened before and after these two verses. So today we will cover uh, Luke chapter 14, verses 14 to 30. Shall we open it to, from using our Bibles on our table? Yeah, we can open it so as I speak, you can read it, you can refer to it. Agnes, when you got the page number, you can. <laughs> 783. 783. Thank you. So it's 783. Okay. Okay, and then let me test this, make sure it works. Hey, okay, it works. <laughs> okay. So we can read the first three verses together. Everybody found it? Okay, ready? 
Then Jesus returned to Galilee, filled with the Holy Spirit's power. Reports about him spread quickly through the whole region. He taught regularly in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went as usual to the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read the scriptures. All right, so we'll pause there. Um, so just a little bit of background. What is a synagogue? It's a, it's a big word. Um, so it is a name of a special building for Jewish people um, to worship God. It's put it simply, it's a bit like a church. Yeah, it's a bit similar to what we have here. Yeah, and this so this is a photo of the outside okay, of a restored synagogue in Nazareth. So this is probably as close as we can get to see what it looks like 2,000 years ago. And this next photo is what it looks like on the inside. So in the synagogue at the time of Jesus, the service is made up of three parts. Okay? Uh, so first part is worship. They, they meet together and they pray. Uh, and the second part is reading. Okay, they read the holy books, uh, kind of like our Bible. So they read they from their Torah, or the Jewish holy writings, and it will be in ancient Hebrew. Um, and third part is teaching. Uh, this part wasn't a lecture by a, like a religious leader, but instead the leader at the time would invite anyone important. Uh, who was there to speak and share a message. And then everybody can discuss what was said. And so this is how Jesus got a chance to speak in the synagogue. The platform, kind of like our platform here, was open for him to share his teaching. And so the first point I want to make today from what we just read is that uh, Jesus, the example for us to follow is that Going to church is a priority, and we should too, you know. So we just read, you know, when he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went as usual, yeah. So Jesus always went to the synagogue. Uh, for them, it will be on Saturdays, the Jewish day of rest. So even though, you know, he might not have agreed with everything they did, he still went. You know, and because Jesus never missed a chance to be with other people, you know, who were praying to God, worshiping God on God's special day. So for us, of course, we meet on Sundays, and the example for us to follow is to come to church regularly, yeah, to worship God together by singing and praying, reading God's Word, the Bible together, discuss and learn together. So. I was very encouraged. Uh, I think last Friday, wasn't it? The Easter Friday service, yeah? I, I saw so many of you here, you know, faithfully coming to the Good Friday service, you know, despite, you know, it was a long weekend, it was raining, and some of you even have young kids, you know, so it was very encouraging for me. And of course, it is very good to see all of you here today as well, um, coming to church, you know, hungry, for God and the things of God and the Word of God. I believe, I really believe that your choosing to come to church makes a positive change in your lives. So I pray that God will bless you all for your faithfulness. And the second point I want to make from this first part that we read uh, from, is from verse 15. It says that Jesus taught regularly in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. So the example for us to follow, um, I feel, is that we should be active here at church because it says he taught regularly. Yeah. So now for us, it doesn't have to be teaching. You can be part of groups, um, home groups, Bible study groups. Alpha, I believe, is starting today. Yeah, uh, Grapevine you know, is another great one. 
men's breakfast just started on Saturday, uh, the police group, uh, just to name a few. Um, and you can also be part of and help out in ministry groups. For example, uh, tech team, hi Ben. <laughs> You know, music worship team, uh, children's ministry, always looking for people. Uh, welcome team, I saw Joshua there today. Uh, prayer team, uh, English class right up there. Um, kitchen as well, you know, just to name a few you know, um, groups that you can help out. And if you, you know, if you need help, if you ever need help finding an area to serve, you know, speak to Pastor Eva. She will be very happy to help you. <laughs> So, so the idea is to, you know, when we come to church, you know, we make coming to church a priority. We, we serve. And on the other hand, we are served by others. And so we, we minister and we are ministered. And we help and then we can be helped. And we can encourage and we can be encouraged. Uh, and we can support and we can be supported. And so really, you know, be a part of the wonderful community here. This really is a good church to belong to. Um, so let me give you an example, okay? One small example of why I feel this is a good church to belong to. Just yesterday, we had session six of a seven session marriage course. Uh, I was actually, again, very encouraged by um, how many couples came from global. I think there was 11 or 12 couples from global attending this marriage course, you know. And, uh, and of course, this course is run by our uh, senior pastor, Pastor Neil, and his wife, Jennifer. So we learned so much from this uh, marriage course. And I feel this course really made a positive difference, uh, positive change in, in my marriage. Um, and you know, this course, you get the course seven sessions, two hours each session. Uh, you get workbooks. Uh, you also get um, child care, very important. <laughs> and you also get delicious afternoon tea. You know, and all for a small price of just $50. You know, wow, you know, where can you get deals like this? You know? <laughs> You know, I, I'm pretty sure that they make no money. They make no profit from running course like this, you know. So, truly, the people here at church, the leaders here, you know, they really care for us and they want and does the best for us, yeah? So, let us continue, okay? Reading from the Luke. So these are probably the main verses for today. And this is where we can see Jesus' mission. Okay, shall we read it together? Yeah. Okay, three, two, one. The scroll of Isaiah the prophet was handed to him. He unrolled the scroll to, and found the place where this was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has appointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. He rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the attendant, and sat down. All eyes in the synagogue looked at him intently. Then he began to speak to them. The scripture you have just heard has been fulfilled this very day. Everyone spoke well of him and was amazed by the gracious words that came from his lips. How can this be? They asked. Isn't this Joseph's son? So, what do you feel when you read about Jesus speaking these words? good news to the poor. Yeah, and, and of course, what is good news to the poor? That they will be even poorer? No, no, right? It's, that's bad news. So good news for the poor is that they will be poor no longer. And captives will be released. Blind will see. The oppressed will be set free. And that the time of God's favor has come. So as we 
read this section about Jesus, and as I was preparing, I, I can really see a big difference between Jesus and John the Baptist. Uh, let me show you. It's, it's actually in the previous chapter, Luke chapter 3. And, and it says, when the crowds came to John for baptism, he said, you brood of snakes, who warned you to flee the coming wrath? Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, we are safe, for we are descendants of Abraham. That means nothing. For I tell you, God can make children of Abraham from these very stones. Even now, the axe of God's judgment is poised, ready to cut the roots of the trees. Yes, every tree that does not produce fruit will be chopped down and strong into the fire. Did you, can you feel the difference? <laughs> John's message was, uh, you know, scary. And uh, I believe it made people fearful. But Jesus, on the other hand, brought good news. So even though Jesus knew that God could be angry, he talked about God's favor, God's grace, not just punishment. So when we compare John's, uh, compared with John's, John's message, Jesus' mission or his message here, I believe, can be summed up in these words, uh, the Lord's favor or God's favor. And again, let me show you how I arrived at this um, conclusion, okay? Let us have a look at the original verse, okay? This is the original verse from Isaiah that Jesus read from. Isaiah chapter 61. Verse 1 to 2, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has appointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come, comma, and with it, the day of God's anger against their enemies? Wait a minute. Jesus didn't finish the sentence. Have you ever noticed this before? Jesus stopped halfway while reading from and quoting from the book of Isaiah. Jesus paused here at this. Uh, I try to make the comma as big as I can. <laughs> and and did not continue on to talk about God's anger. And the way I read it is the fact that Jesus paused here and did not finish the sentence means that when Jesus said, the scripture you have just heard has been fulfilled this very day, does not include this part here about God's anger against their enemies. And to me, this shows how good God is, how patient and how kind God is. Because for the last 2,000 over years, the entire human race has been resting on this glorious comma, living under God's favor, while God has been withholding his anger. And this is why I believe that Jesus' mission and his main message is about God's favor. The question to ask now, of course, is what is God's favor? Um, so I tried to look it up, uh, and John Strong's concordance says that God's favor, in other words, also means to be accepted or acceptable by God. Uh, to be delighted by God, to have God's good will towards you. And many times you can hear the phrase God's grace used interchangeably with the phrase God's favor. And to help us further understand God's favor, I think it would be good to have some examples. So the first example is eternal life. So Pastor Eva shared with us last Sunday about eternal life. And let me say, this is probably the first and the most important uh, example of God's favor. And this is like a present 
from God because we cannot earn it ourselves. Uh, as it says in um, Ephesians 2, 8-9, God saved you by His grace, His favor when you believed. And you cannot take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. And the second example of God's favor is strength. Strength to live for God. Uh, yes, sometimes life is tough, you know, and we all can use some help. And the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 2 1 and other places in the Bible that God's favor can give people, can give us the strength to do things we wouldn't be able to do on our own, to be strong through God's grace that God um, gives to us in Christ Jesus. Yeah, I think, I think we can all agree that life sometimes can be hard, you know, <sighs> money problems, health problems, relationship problems, yeah, just to name a few, you know. So I feel we all need God's favor to, to make it, to make us through. So to summarize these two examples, God's favor is amazing and is something that we all need because it is only through God's favor that we can have eternal life and it is only through, uh, through God's favor that we can have a strength to live for God. Let us continue and see what happens next, okay? So this is from verse 23 onwards. Then Jesus said, You will undoubtedly quote me this proverb, Physician, heal yourself. Meaning, do miracles here in your hometown like those you did in Capernaum. But I tell you the truth, no prophet is accepted in his own hometown. Certainly, there were many needy widows in Israel in Elijah's time when the heavens were closed for three and a half years and a severe famine devastated the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them. He was sent instead to a foreigner, a widow of Zarephath in the land of Sidon. And many in Israel had leprosy in the time of the prophet Elisha. But only one healed was Naaman, a Syrian. When they heard this, the people in the synagogue were furious. Jumping up, they mobbed him and forced him to the edge of the hill on which the town was built. They intended to push him over the cliff, but he passed right through the crowd and went on his way. Wow, the, the people changed very fast, right? <laughs> You know, the, the, I think can, you can tell that, you know, by the story, uh, let me go back a little bit, uh, that the people who heard Jesus speak was not too happy, yeah? That's, yeah, not too happy at all about what Jesus had said. And why? Well, the people in the synagogue got upset because of what Jesus said about non-Jewish people what they call Gentiles, uh, people like you and me, really, uh, they, these people got angry because Jesus said nice words, nice things about Gentiles. Um, you see, back then, uh, many Jews believed that they were God's only chosen people, and they looked down on anyone who are not Jews. One commentary writer wrote, and I thought it was really funny. Uh, well, maybe not funny, but uh, let me read it first. If you think it's funny, you can hear. Uh, the Jewish people at the time believed that God had created the Gentiles to be fuel for the fires of hell. Okay, <laughs> that's very strong words, right? But, but Jesus spoke as if God had a special favor, you know, love and kindness towards Gentiles. And, and this made them very angry. So one point I want to make here is that the good news you know, 
about Jesus is for everyone, not just for the Jews. Now, some of you might think that believing in Jesus is a you know, religion for white people, you know, for like guai you know, like Cantonese slang, if you know Cantonese, <laughs> for, for foreigners, okay? Uh, and this is not true. You know, Jesus' message of salvation, the good news of being able to be made right with God is available for everyone. As the Bible says in Acts 10.43, Jesus is the one all the prophets testified about, saying that everyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven through his name. Everyone, including people like you and me, who are not Jews. If you think about it, anyone who are not Jews are considered Gentiles. So really, there's no difference between, you know, Caucasians or Asians or Indians, you know, between, or between anyone or any color skin. Everyone is saved by believing in Jesus. And for any of you who do not yet believe in Jesus, um, know that yeah, this gospel, this good news, can be yours when you believe in Jesus. And my personal recommendation, having been coming to this church for the last 18 years since university days, so I'll call you as old as Big Abigail, <laughs> coming here, you know, uh, my personal recommendation is that believing in Jesus the decision to believe in Jesus is the single best decision that I have ever made in my life. Believing in Jesus released God's favor, God's eternal life uh, in my life, as well as, of course, the strength to live and to live for God, even through hard times. And the last point I want to make today is that Jesus chose the cross. On Good Friday, uh, Pastor Neil shared a message about God's divine time uh, and about how prior to the events at Easter, Jesus said, my time has not come. And this year, I feel, in uh, Luke chapter 4, 28 to 30, is another example of this. And Pastor Neil also shared about how at the Garden of Gethsemane, before Jesus was betrayed, Jesus said, look, the hour has come. So Jesus knew what was going to happen. Right? But Jesus willingly went to the cross anyway. Yeah? If Jesus did not want to, not one person will be able to lay a hand on him. I mean, you, can you imagine a crowd this size, yeah? And, I, and all of you got angry at me, yeah? You know, and tried to throw me out uh, that window there, okay? There's, there's not much I can do. Uh, I mean, I think I am decently strong, but not strong enough to resist a hundred plus of you, <laughs> you know? So, but here in the story, you see a whole crowd a mob, they were angry, they were furious, and they were trying to kill Jesus. And they were very close, but they were not able to. Jesus was powerful. Jesus simply walked through them as if they were nothing. You know, so friends, what happened to Jesus at Easter was not an accident. Jesus went through all the pain and suffering for us, really, you know, and Jesus at the garden was so stressed that he sweat blood as he prayed. Jesus was then betrayed by a friend with a kiss, denied by his other friends, and abandoned by all his students. Jesus was then unlawfully trialed by Jewish authorities, then sentenced to death by crucifixion by a Roman governor. He was then whipped by cruel Roman soldiers, carried, then hung on the cross where he suffered and died after a long six hours, taking on the curse, the shame, and the sin of the entire world on him. And friends, at any point, he could have walked off, but he chose the cross. 
also that God's favor, God's eternal life can be for us when we believe. And we know this is true because Jesus rose from the dead three days later on the first Easter Sunday. Uh, I, I love how the song we're about to sing puts it. Oh, we're going to sing this next one. It's great. Uh, it says, Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. Yeah, such lovely words. So in closing, okay, um, I'm closing. From Luke chapter 4, verse 14 to 30, we can see how one Jesus is, is an example for us to follow in our church life. How Jesus' mission is about God's favor. And we also talked about what is God's favor and how God's favor can be seen in the two areas of eternal life and the strength to live for God. We then saw how this good news about Jesus is for everyone who believes and how Jesus willingly chose the cross. So thank you for listening. Uh, oh, I see Big Abby got walking away. But I'm going to invite the worship team back up. <laughs> so I hope you have all been blessed and uh, I'll leave you all with the worship team. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wayne, for your message. Shall we all stand? Yes, thank you, Wayne, for reminding us. Yes, Jesus is our living hope. And I'm not sure here who is feeling, oh, there's something stopping me. But what is stopping you? So if there's something stopping you, please, I would encourage you to come forward because we have a lovely prayer team over on that side and that side. They would love to pray for you and they would love to pray with you. And your table leaders, they would love to pray with you. And for the rest of us, we can sing this song, Living Hope. says
worshiping you so Lord we just want to say thank you for coming thank you for coming into our lives and he has given you this invitation anyone if any one of you feeling like oh he's talking to me please come forward and there's power in Jesus name there's healing in Jesus name so right now we just want to sing this song i speak jesus and we just want to speak jesus into everyone's life into everyone's situation whatever you are facing there's jesus in you jesus in your life we want to speak jesus into your family into your children 
into everyone's life so that we can have strength to face. So, encourage you to sing together. I speak Jesus. Shine through the shadows, a light of fire. 
Jesus, thank you so much for today, God. I want to pray for everyone, oh Lord, that you be there with them throughout their whole week, oh God. You have called each one of us sons and daughters of you, oh Lord. We are crowned with your blood, oh God. And I pray that you cover all of us as we go through this week and through our lives, oh Lord. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I really feel, um, Wayne, thank you for the message. And what really spoke to me is, you know, Jesus walked through those crowds and there's opposition. And Jesus just simply walked through opposition as if they were nothing. And that's true, isn't it? You know, Jesus can walk through any opposition we face as if it is nothing. You know, he said to the storm, be still, two words. And the storm was still. This is the power of our Jesus and he comes to bring good news that the poor will be set free, the oppressed will be released, that the blind will see and the Lord, the time of the Lord's favor has come. And I really feel that, I really believe that. We live in a, in a time in history, the world's a mess, but God's favor is coming more and more his light is shining in the darkness. So we proclaim that favor of God on each one of us today, that we can know that the time has come, that anything we face can be overcome. So please, if you have any obstacles, anything you're facing in this life, anything that's difficult, we can pray in the name of Jesus, the name that has power, over all authorities, over all kingdoms, over anything that we face. It is His name that is above all. So please, as we, we just finish in a few verses of worship and anybody who wants prayer, come and claim that promise. Thank you. Your name is healing, your name is love. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Your name, your name is power, your name is healing.
Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. problem. Jesus, please provide for us. You are our Jehovah Jireh. Is it sickness, chronic pain? We declare the name of Jesus over it. We declare healing. Jesus is our healer. Is it a family member, friends who do not know Jesus yet and they're a bit difficult? We declare the name Jesus over them and we speak Jesus is our Savior. So let's just spend some time thinking about things that we want to speak the name of Jesus over. There is power in His name. Every word, unkind word that was spoken over us, every offense, we speak the name of Jesus. Because you call us love, you call us beautiful and wonderfully made. Thank you, Jesus. We are children of God. And we can rest that we are children of the Most High God. We are daughters and sons of the living King. Thank you, Jesus. We speak the name of Jesus. There's power in your name. Oh, Jesus, we just love your name. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you for you are the Prince of Peace. You're comforting every single person right now. Let's give Jesus a loud clap of praise. And you may take your seat. Thank you for those who have joined us online as well.